So in this video I'm going to be modifying a 2.4 GHz dipole antenna into a 5 GHz Wi-Fi dipole antenna and the reason I'm doing this is I've got a project coming up where I've been asked to modify several BT Home Hub 5 routers actually it's um, 8 of them in total and those particular routers are dual band 5 GHz and 2.4 GHz and they have five antennas, they've got three for the 5 GHz and two for the 2.4 GHz. Now, the 5 GHz antennas I was looking at buying online were extremely expensive. I couldn't find them cheap anywhere. But um, 2.4 GHz dipoles, I managed to get 50 of these for 35 pence each plus free shipping. So what I thought I'd do is buy extra of the 2.4 GHz and modify some down to the 5 GHz band. So here is one of the antennas with its lid off and as you can see it's one of the longer range antennas, it's got the loading coil here and this part of the antenna here is 60 millimeters long and here we've got uh, 25 millimeters long from the base of the loading coil to the start of the uh, shield sleeve down here and this sleeve should also be 25 millimeters long and I've got my ruler and roughly guessed where the base uh, should finish here and it is around the 25 millimeters mark maybe 24 millimeters so what I'm actually going to do to make it easier I'm going to get my Dremel and I'm going to actually cut around this sleeve here to bring it flush with uh, this housing so uh, hopefully it's a little bit of guesswork and I'm going to actually deconstruct one just to uh, see how deep this actually goes and then hopefully then we can build up, add some coax and build up the rest of our antenna using uh, the loading coil and this part as well. So here's one that I've actually sacrificed in order to see how long that metal sleeving is and how thick the actual base of this housing is just to see where I'm going to cut and um, one interesting thing is uh, these, the, all these have come off the same cellar but I don't know if he's bought them from different suppliers because this one is actually crimped on and this one's actually soldered on so uh, very strange but anyway what I'm going to have to do in order to get the 13.4 millimeters uh, length for the sleeve for the 5 gigahertz I'm going to actually have to cut into the housing around here now that will leave me enough lip on there in order to place the sleeve back on afterwards but uh, that's what I'm going to have to do put my cut around there with the Dremel and uh, remove around half of this sleeving. It's a little bit more than half but uh, that's what I'm going to have to do. So I've cut around that metal tubing and I've released it uh, from the part that's still in the bottom down here and I've cut away leaving 13.4 uh, millimeters or thereabouts in the bottom but I can check that and measure it when I actually get rid of this because we can build up a little bit with some solder but uh, I'm left with this where it's crimped on to the actual coax now I have had a go with um, some uh, cutters to try and release this but it's not happening so what I'm going to actually do is cut through here to release this and I'm going to be left with that little piece of coax there that I need to strip back and solder onto that tubing and then the centre connector I'm going to have to extend with some uh, of my own coax so I haven't got a lot of room to play with and a little bit of perseverance with the cutters and we've actually released it where it's clamped on and we've got it all off in one piece so uh, We've now got a nice uh, piece of coax to actually work with. I mean, if I did cut it off, we'd only be left with this small piece here, which uh, would probably be doable, but it'd be more fiddlier. So I've got the little copper tubing out here, and uh, I have cut it a little bit short. So it's uh, actually coming in on the calipers at 11.6 um, millimeters, and that's quite a bit of a difference to 13.4 uh, to build up with solder so you know what I'm just gonna cut and make my own out of uh, some tubing I've got so now that I've got a piece of tubing cut out the exact length I want which is 13.4 millimeters instead of trying to pack this outer braid down into this um, shield here um, because I want to pack it down and then solder if I pushed it all the way down 
I'd be quite close to this plastic so what I'm going to do now I've got all this coax to play with is actually bring it up to that and then I can solder onto that braid to hold it in place So we've now got our uh, bottom shield in place and we soldered it there, it's a nice neat job. So now we've got uh, this piece of inner coax, the uh, actual signal wire if you like to play with so we can extend that out now and uh, we can uh, modify the actual uh, loading coil and uh, the top driven element of this antenna. So now that we've got uh, probably the hardest part out of the way, I'm going to start modifying what's left of this antenna. So I'm going to need to cut this down to 278 millimeters. So carefully hold it in place, and then I'm going to put a mark there, which is just slightly bigger than what I want, because then I'm going to get in with the digital calipers and then slowly chop it down until uh, I get it as exact as I possibly can. So now that I'm happy that I've got this cut to as close to 278 millimeters as I possibly can, what I'm going to do is modify these loading coils. Now, I only want three of them, but I'm actually going to cut it a little bit long because I'm going to kind of bend it out like this one is, so I can actually solder the uh, center coax here to that. So I'm going to cut it actually about there. So then I can get the um, pliers on there and actually bend it out so it's coming down in this direction so I can solder onto it. So a little bit of persuasion, it's, uh, I think this is actually brass, it's not copper so it's slightly stiffer to work with than copper is but uh, I've uh, used a thin screwdriver which I've used to build loading coils before and put it in there to keep the shape of these three coils while I actually bent this leg out. So. Uh, we can actually solder onto that. So what I'm going to do is clean that up with some emery paper and uh, just nip it in a little bit more like this one is and then we can solder directly onto that. So now we want the gap between the actual bottom shield here to the beginning of this loading coil to be 13.4 millimeters, the same length of that uh, metal tubing. The easiest way that I've found over the years to do this is to actually get a piece of um, masking tape and stick it down onto your work surface where you're working and then get another piece of masking tape to actually hold that bottom part of the antenna in place line it up with that black mark and then you can actually come in with this and line that up with that end of the black mark and you can if you've got to solder actually pre-tinned on there and pre-tinned on there you just need the heat of your soldering iron to actually solder them in place and you know your gap there is exactly uh, the length you want it. And there's a side by side comparison of um, the modified one for the 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz and I've also cut down the uh, actual sleeve so it'll be shorter so uh, I can tell the difference between them both because like I say I've got quite a few to make. So here is the uh, Fabri uh, antenna finished off and uh, as you can see I've cut down the outer sleeving so it's now a lot shorter than the original and uh, you know a lot of people say you know it's it's roughly half a wavelength or for Wi-Fi anyway half a wavelength of the uh, 2.4 gigahertz so uh, it's good enough so what but uh, as you can see in this screenshot here the uh, first graph is uh, actually me testing the uh, 5 gigahertz with a 2.4 gigahertz antenna which is this one here and then I plugged in the one that we've now tuned specifically to 5 gigahertz and you can see there's a, a big difference there and with Wi-Fi and if you're wanting to shoot video first person view then uh, you know you modify your antennas and get an extra 500 meters out of it then uh, you know you, you're doing well and uh, a ham guy was arguing with me why am I so finicky over the uh, you know measurements if I'm one millimeter out so what but uh, you know as a ham radio operator he gets excited over getting an extra 500 miles 200 miles whatever 
but to get an extra 200 meters out of an antenna you know at uh, microwave frequencies it's a big deal so that's why you know really take your time with your measurements and get it spot on so I hope you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it I mean uh, it wasn't a video that I originally intended to shoot but uh, I've got quite a few of these to modify so I thought what the hell somebody uh, might find it interesting because it's uh, you know if you've just got a couple of these antennas to make it's no point in going out and buying all the materials to make them you know you can uh, buy these cheap ones and modify them down no problem at all and uh, you know as always uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and I will link down below uh, the uh, 5 gigahertz and the 5.8 gigahertz dipole that I made so you can get the measurements there as well because I know uh, first person view is normally shot at the 5.8 gigahertz um, spectrum and uh, there is a little bit of difference with the measurements and uh, as always please uh, give it a thumbs up if you uh, enjoyed it and uh, hopefully see you for the next one